Hello, my name is Oscar Ocampo from Federal University of Bahia. I will talk about virtual body groups, virtual twin groups, and crystallographic groups. This is a joint work with Paulo Santos Jr. I would like to thank the organizer of this online seminar for giving me the opportunity to talk about this work. I will start uh, talking about the first connection about, uh, between brain theory and crystallographic group theory. It appears in this article of 2017 from Dasibar Lima Gonzalez, John Washki, and me. Then some other works appear, like this one from Ivan Marin, called Crystallographic Groups and Flat Manifolds from Complex Reflection Groups. Uh, also, uh, the three authors on Carolina Pereira. Uh, relating surface break groups and crystallography groups. Then this is the, the close case, that means uh, surface uh, that are connected, closed, compact. And then in the PhD thesis from Renato Diniz, uh, he worked in the case of finite punter surfaces and relating them, these braid groups on, on these surfaces, and uh, related them with crystallographic groups. And recently, Bardakov uh, and other people uh, established a relation between virtual braid groups and crystallographic groups. These are more or less some related works. There are other uh, works. Uh, that comes from this, this connection that doesn't appear here. But for this moment, I would like to point out uh, these four uh, papers. So the natural question that we have is which braid like groups have quotients that are isomorphic to crystallographic groups? So until now, we have this other non-classical braid groups and, and it, were, uh, it was possible to, to relate them with crystallographic groups uh, giving us uh, taking some questions so the idea is which other <laughs> groups uh, that have some behavior like, like braid groups have this kind of questions isomorphic crystallographic groups so in this talk uh, I would like to, to talk about the case of virtual braids and virtual twin groups. It is based on this paper with uh, Paulo Santos Jr. So, in order to explain how we obtain the connection, we need the, the presentation of, of these groups. In this moment, I we have here the presentation of the virtual braid group. In, it has these generators, sigma i and rho i, and these kind of relations. So the relations in blue are the classical relations from the art in braid group. Relations in red are some classical relations from the symmetric group. And the relations in black are the mix of relations. So this relation mix the two kinds of, of generators, sigma i and rho j. So we need this, this presentation of this group in order to, to give some computations and, and try to, to make uh, some mathematics in order to establish the connection with crystallographic groups. We also need the pure virtual break group that means is is the kernel of the natural the canonical projection of the virtual break group into the symmetric group. This canonical projection, uh, in fact, needs to establish uh, what happened with the rho i generators. So we have here the definition, and then so we define the virtual, the pure virtual break group as the kernel of this projection. 
And it's possible to show that the virtual break group is a semi-direct product. The, the natural section that we have is sending tau i into rho i. This is the tau i. So we have this, this semi-direct product. Um, the, the, pure, the pure virtual break group has the following group presentation. Is given by the generators lambda ij for this kind of ij and these two family of relations. So, with this presentation of the virtual pure break group, we may abelianize it and then we have the following information. So, first of all, this short exact sequence. We, we have this short exact sequence and it's possible to take the quotient in some sense obtaining this other short exact sequence. So we have here the quotient of VPN mod the commutator subgroup of VPN. This is gamma 2, the two step of the lower central series of the group VPN. In the middle we have VBN mod gamma 2 of VPN this is the commutator subgroup of VPN. This pi p uh, bar is the, the projection of the natural projection that we define here. This is the natural projection sending elements of the virtual break group into the symmetric group. So we have this short exact sequence. And from the presentation given from the virtual peer break group, this is not too difficult to show that the, the quotient, the abelianization of the virtual break group is a free abelian group uh, of rank n times n minus 1. And is generated by the, the classes of the lambda ij. We have, we, we don't, do not write bars in order to avoid uh, too much notation. So, we have this, this abelianization of the virtual pure break group. So, that means that this short exact sequence is of the, of the form. Uh, we have here in the kernel a free abelian group. We have in the other side, in the quotient, a finite group. And using the lemma 1 from Barbakov on the presentation of the virtual pure group, virtual pure break group given before. Is it not too difficult to show that the action by conjugation of the symmetric group on the virtual pure break group is just as the following. We take an element of the symmetric group acting on a pure generator. We take the conjugation here. Recall that the symmetric group uh, is part of VBN. So we take the conjugation and the conjugation means that it's just taking the, the, the action in the sub-indexes. So from this we, we may conclude that the action of the symmetric group on this question is injected. So we have the following information. We have a short exact sequence in such that the kernel is just a free abelian group, the quotient is a finite group, and the action of this quotient into the kernel is injected, the action by conjugation. What this is important, because the following definition of crystallographic groups uh, involve this information. So, let me give the algebraic characterization of crystallographic groups in this moment. Take a finite group phi, and uh, so let pi be any group and n greater or equal than, than 1 and entire. So we have this short exact sequence. We have here a free abelian group, a finite group. So the middle group is a crystallographic group of dimension m. If and only if the Integral representation induced by the action by conjugation is injected or faithful. So we need this all this information in order to establish 
that this middle group is a crystallographic group. Okay, so in this case, this finite group is called the holonomy group of pi. The theta, the, the representation obtained by the action by conjugation, is called the holonomy representation of pi. In the case, in the case when we have a crystallographic group that is torsion free, we have the so called Bieberbach groups. These Bieberbach groups are really important groups uh, because they are related with uh, Riemannian geometry. Okay. So, given this information, this characterization of crystallographic groups, obtaining, uh, so we may apply this characterization to the information that we have. We have. So we may establish the first result that is this theorem one. We have a split short such sequence such that the middle group is crystallographic group because we have here the abelianization of the pure virtual braid group that this is free abelian group of rank n times n minus one and recall that the action by conjugation of Sn uh, on this group is injected so the respective uh, represent, integral representation is faithful. So we have that this middle group is a crystallographic group. Uh, this is a split because it's, it's natural to have a section here. Okay, well, <laughs> recently in this work of Bardakov, they also prove that uh, we have this decomposition uh, as a similar product. Also, they prove that the middle group is a crystallographic group, and they studied linear representations of this middle group. Okay, in our work, we reprove this connection, and then study stru structural aspects of this crystallographic question. Okay, so the idea now is try to understand some kind of properties of this quotient given by the virtual break group, not the commutator subgroup of BPN. Okay, in order to start this study, we would like to establish this proposition too. That means we have an embedding of the classical break group, the Artin break group, into the virtual break group. And this embedding induces an embedding of the quotients. And the point is that this quotient, Bn mod gamma 2 of Pn, is a crystallographic group. So we have an embedding of crystallographic groups given by quotients of break group into the quotient of the virtual break group. The idea of, of, of the proof is the following. We have in this paper a they prove that the restriction of the natural homomorphism given by sending from Bn into the VBN, we just send the generator sigma i into sigma i, and the restriction is natural injective. The restriction sends Aij into this element of the virtual, the pure virtual break group. So we construct this commutative diagram and then apply the five lemma. And using this kind of, of, of diagram, we may obtain this injective homomorphism and then we have the, the embedding. Okay. So what is this interesting? Since we have this embedding, we natural Naturally, we may ask some some questions, like the ones given in in this in the paper of Bardakov et al. For example, which elements in the quotient of the virtual break group have finite order? It is a natural question. Or also, realization of Bieberbach groups inside the quotient of the of the virtual break group. So. 
in, in our paper from 2017, we prove, we really, in fact, we characterize the finite order elements inside this classical quotient, see, this classical, this quotient, sorry, the quotient of the classical art in break group. And so, and also we, we realize Bieberbach groups in this quotient. So, <laughs> given this embedding, it's natural to have some realization of finite order elements and also Bieberbach groups inside this new quotient given by the virtual break group mod the commutator subgroup of the virtual pure break group. But the question, in fact, is maybe it's another. It's, it is, pos is it possible to realize Sorry, is it possible to characterize finite order elements, all the finite order elements in this quotient? And also, is it natural to us uh, which other Bieberbach groups or other kind of uh, subgroups, interesting subgroups, we may realize here? So, the point uh, next is to, to try to characterize Finite, all finite order elements inside this, this question and try to realize some interesting uh, subgroups, uh, not only the ones coming from the, 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 the question given by the classical art and break group. So let me speak now the, the characterization of finite order elements and also talk about the, the the characterization of its conjugacy classes. Okay, the idea, the, the technique to study finite order elements and also conjugacy classes, and in fact, and try to realize, to, to solve the realization of subgroups, this technique is just given by solving integral equations on the exponents of the expression of the words by the generators of VPN mod gamma 2 of VPN. So it means, we have a problem inside this quotient of VBN mod gamma 2 of VPN. And the idea is try to, to push this, this question inside the free abelian group and try to solve the, the, the original question inside the free abelian group using just integral equations of, of the spawning of these expressions. So, this theorem 3 means, it, it says, it, it talks about the characterization of uh, finite order elements. So, in order to do that, uh, we take some consecutive integers. So, we may take the virtual braid element. So, we have a projection that uh, gives a permutation, we take the inverse of this permutation and call it theta. And also, let P theta, the transversal of the action of this virtual braid element, on the set given by the generators of the virtual pure braid group. In fact, this is, this is the, the set of the, the abelianization of the virtual pure black group. Okay, so this element given by the product of all powers of the, generate, the, the generators of the virtual the abelianization of the virtual pure black group, sorry, times this element that have a, a permutation associated. So this element have order t in this quotient group if and only if the sum of all these integers running uh, into the set of elements given in the orbit of the lambda ij by the action of theta on this set okay so we have a condition the condition for this element to have 
finite order t, if you know, is the order of this element. So the condition to, to this arbitrary element to have order t depends of these equations of the integers, equation of integers, uh, when we run some pure elements uh, running into the orbit of, of some fixed one element. Okay? And this is given for all lambda ij in the transversal td theta. So, in order to complete the, the information, let me talk about the proposition 4. If you have two elements of order tau in this quotient group, then they are conjugate in this VBN mod gamma 2 of VPN if and only if the, relation, the related permutations are conjugated in its n. So, two finite order elements in this quotient are conjugated if and only if their projections are conjugated in the symmetric group. Let me talk about the, the sketch of the proof of theorem 3. How we may prove that these elements have order t. So we take the power t of this element. It means that when we have the the complete the complete expression, we may we may take uh, conjugation con conjugation in conjugation by this element rho one rho two and until rho t minus one. So we make it, it is possible to to turn this expression into a lot of conjugations, and the last one is rho one rho two rho t minus one. And the last element here is rho one rho two rho t minus one power t, but this element has order t, so it is uh, just one. Then. So, taking this element power t, it means that we have all these conjugations, and when we, have, we say that it is equal to 1, it means that when we uh, take the orbit of the element of lambda ij, for example, until the action of theta on the set of, of, of pure generators, we may uh, gather all the, the powers that are just integers and, and not all these, these powers uh, need to be, this, this sum need to be zero because in the right hand side we have the zero element of the abelianization of the virtual break group, this is a free abelian break group. So, it means that this all for for uh, for all elements in the orbit we have that the powers are sums and these sums need to be zero. Okay, so it it says that if this element power t is equal to one, it, it is equal to one if and only if the sum of all these integers when running the lambda are as in the orbit of lambda im jm given by the action of theta on the set of generators of the abelianization of the virtual ray group is zero um, it need to work for all elements in the transversal td theta so the idea is to as, as i said before is just to change the, the problem into a problem of, of a system of integral equations. Okay. We have a corollary. So when we have two natural numbers, n and t, and we have these positive integers, not necessarily distinct, all of them greater than or equal to 2, 
for with the condition that the sum of the n i uh, from i equal to one to t, this sum is uh, as is is lower than m. Then this quotient v b n mod gamma two of v b n have infinite elements of order the lower common multiple n one of n t. And furthermore. Exceeds an element whose related permutation has this cycle type in one and two and three. So we have a lot of of finite order elements inside this quotient VBN mod gamma two of VBN. Now I would like to talk about the realization of infinite virtually cyclic groups. The idea is more or less the same. So we push the problem of realization into a problem of uh, systems of equation over the integers. So let me start here. We take a homomorphism from Z to the automorphism of Zn. So alpha is determined by the image of a generator of Z. In some sense, alpha of X is some automorphism alpha k given by multiplying by k where k has greatest common divisor of nik equal to one now a group g is virtually cyclic cyclic if it has a cyclic subgroup h of finite index so we would like to to realize uh, virtually cyclic groups inside this quotient and the result that we obtain is the following for every k uh, in this set 1 to n minus 1 where n is greater than or equal than 2 such that the gcd of nik is equal to 1 so the virtually cyclic group zn semi-direct product with z using this automorphism alpha k can be realized in the quotient vbn mod gamma 2 of vpn the idea is more or less the same it's just solving some systems of equations in this free abelian group now let me talk about bieberbach groups so distortion free crystallographic groups also called bieberbach groups they are really interesting because they are related with Riemannian geometry and dynamical systems. The, the idea of this relation is explained in the, in the book of, of Joseph Wolf, and it is like the following. We have a correspondence between the collection of Bieberbach groups of dimension m and the collection of flat compact connected Riemannian manifolds of dimension m uh, the connection is given from the the fundamental group so the fundamental group of a flat manifold is a bieberbach group and the the bieberbach group any bieberbach group is correspond is, is the fundamental group of of some uh, flat manifold okay and so a lot of information of a flat manifold is recorded in an algebraical sense in its fundamental group, that is a Bieberbach group, and also in its holonomic representation. The holonomic representation of a Bieberbach group uh, really, really records a lot of algebraic information that have infor geometric information of the flat manifold. So, it is very interesting to explore some properties of Bieberbach groups uh, in order to get information of the respective flat Riemannian manifold. So now we would like to realize Bieberbach subgroups of the quotient of the virtual break group, not the commutator subgroup of the virtual pure break group. We have here a result using some finite group, this is a cyclic subgroup. So the Bieberbach groups that we are realizing 
are driven by groups with a holonomic group uh, of cyclic type. So let Gn be the cyclic subgroup of the symmetric group generated by the maximum cycle 1, n, and minus 1 until 2. So this is a maximum cycle inside Sn. We take the cyclic subgroup generated by this element. So there is a Bieberbach subgroup Gn uh, in Vbn mod gamma 2 of Vbn of dimension n times n minus 1, and the holonomy group is exactly Gn. Furthermore, the center of this Bieberbach subgroup is a free abelian group of rank n minus 1. The idea to prove uh, this theorem is the following. We've, we need to, to find a well-behaved subgroup L of the abelianization of the virtual Pilbury group such that the following short exact sequence satisfies the definition of crystallographic groups and also this middle group is a uh, torsion free. The idea to find this L, this nice subgroup L, is uh, using the Rydemeister described pr uh, process. So the, the, the the, the, the steps are a lot of them, maybe. We, we have, we, we need too much time to explain how to do that. But the idea is just to push the information about the short exact sequence related to this crystallographic group, VBN mod gamma 2 of VBN, and using the Rydermeister scryer process, process, we may obtain this L. So, we obtain a short exact sequence such that the middle group is a crystallographic group. And then it's, it is possible to prove that the, the middle group is torsion free. And then we have a Bieberma group. The DL that we obtain using the Rydermeister Scryer process is this kind of L. We have powers of a lot of uh, these generators of the abelianization of the virtual Pilbury group. And for some uh, elements, we have the product for some element, that is, is this lambda j, we have all of them except the one corresponding to a equal to one, j equal to, and for this case of lambda 1, 2, we choose this element for the product of all the elements in the orbit of lambda 1, 2, uh, given by the orbit of tau. Uh, tau is, is the related permutation, is, is this element. So this tau acts on the set of lambda ij. And we have the product of all lambdas in this orbit of lambda 1, 2. Okay, so this is L. And in order to compute the center, we just use some lemma of that appears in the book of Shepansky, which ensures that the center is given by the elements of L fixed by the action of Gn. And so we obtain the rank of the center. In fact, we may ex uh, explicitly say a uh, a basis of the of the center. Okay. Now, I would like to talk about another kind of uh, pure braid-like groups called virtual twin groups. First, then we talk about the twin groups. In some sense, virtual braid groups are generalizations of classical braid groups. And also twin groups are more or less related with these classical braid groups. Okay, twin groups, also known as planar braid groups, is a class of right angle coxeter groups, and they appear in the work of Shabbat and Vojvodsky. And they call them as Grotendieck cartographical groups. Then Kovanov, uh, use the name of twin groups for this, this kind of groups. 
and he gave uh, a geometric interpretation of these groups similar to the ones for our team break groups this is more or less like an analog of our team break groups then we have the virtual twin virtual twin group this kind of groups were introduced in, in the world of Barbakov, Singh and Vesnin uh, very recently they are an abst abstract generalization of twin groups and they also define the pure virtual twin group as a natural uh, as a kernel of the natural projection from VTN onto the symmetric group and then in the work of Naik Nanda Singh, they studied structural aspects of this kind of, of groups. Okay, so we use this information, in particular the information from the paper of Naik Nanda Singh. So you, we use presentation of the virtual twin group, the pure virtual twin group, and we use the, the same steps as the ones that we we use in the case of virtual break groups in order to obtain this theorem we have a split short exact sequence in the middle we have the virtual twin group mod gamma 2 of evtn it means the commutator subgroup of the pure virtual twin group this is the middle group the kernel is this free abelian group the quotient is the symmetric group the middle group is a crystallographic group. And also, as we did with uh, the virtual break group mod gamma 2 of VPN, we also obtained some results for the quotient of VTN mod gamma 2 of PVTN. Now, I would like to talk about some related groups. So, we have here the two main groups in this talk, that is the virtual break group, the virtual twin group. Recall that for the virtual twin group, we also have that the middle group is crystallographic group, and we prove a lot of properties in our paper about this middle group. That means the classification of finite order elements, uh, conjugacy classes of finite order elements, and also any other elements. Uh, realization of virtual cyclic groups, realization of Biberba groups. And so we have this, this VBN and VTN are the, the main objects in our paper, in our work. But, so, but, but also we have uh, some quotients of these two groups. That means we have these arrows are projections. So for the virtual break group, we have here the welded break group is a quotient of the virtual break group. Also, we have the flat virtual break group. We also have the unrestricted virtual break group. We have here the flat welded break group. We have here the Gauss virtual break group. And on the right hand side for the virtual twin group, we have quotients like the flat virtual break group the Gauss virtual twin group, the welded twin group, and then as a sub question we have the Gauss virtual break group and also we have the flat welded the flat welded break group. Recall that these arrows are surjections in between uh, these these groups. So we prove the following result. In green we may obtain some kind of quotients, the respective quotients, for example, we have here VBN mod gamma 2 of VPN, so we, we take the respective quotients mod gamma, the, the quotients of this group, groups mod uh, gamma 2 of the respective pure parts, so it means we have welded blade group, mod gamma 2 of welded pure blade group, a restricted virtual blade group, mod gamma 2 of a restricted virtual pure blade group, and both of them are isomorphic to VBN mod gamma 2 of VPN. And 
also is similar for the virtual twin groups. So these groups in orange, when we take the quotients mod gamma 2 of the respective uh, pure subgroups, we obtain isomorphic groups. So, given this, it's natural to, to say that the respective quotients are crystallographic groups. So, this group is a crystallographic group, this also is a crystallographic group, and both of them have the same properties as the quotient of VBN mod gamma 2 of VPN because they are isomorphic. And also, it's similar for the case of the virtual twin group. The, the, these quotients. The isomorphisms of the first item were pointed out to us by Paolo Bellingeri and John Washington in personal communications. What about the Gauss virtual braid group? So this this is the the different one in red. So the quotient of the Gauss virtual braid group mod gamma two of the respective pure part. It's not a crystallographic group just because the abelianization of the Gauss virtual pure break group is not a free abelian group. It has finite order elements. It's just the reason because this quotient is not a crystallographic group. But on the other hand, using the same techniques about classification of finite order elements or using the same technique of, of solving equations on the integers we may try to, uh, to characterize or to realize uh, subgroups here. So, more or less, the same results that we obtain for the quotient of the virtual twin group or the virtual break group mod gamma 2 of the respective pure subgroup, we may obtain this kind of results here in the quotient of the Gauss virtual break group. So, this is... Uh, this is the, 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 the information that uh, I want to talk today for, for you. Thank you so much for your attention. Um, see you.